Hello folks, welcome to my channel. I hope you all are doing great. The Romans knew it as a Boracum, to the Saxons it was a Forwick. The Vikings, who came as invaders but stayed in as settlements, called it Yorvik. Today to us it is York, thus we are off to York again. The most cost-effective and efficient mode of transportation to reach York is by train. Therefore, we embarked on a train journey from Leeds Station. Perhaps you are wondering why the station appears to be unusually empty. It is likely due to the fact that it's Sunday and many individuals tend to stay indoors. Approximately in 30 minutes we will reach our destination. York is one of England's finest and most beautiful historic cities. This city has a captivating charm that draws me in every time I visit. Despite having been there twice already, I still long to return and explore its many wonders further. In this two-part series, I will be sharing my experience of this enchanting city. In part 1, we will delve into the fascinating exhibits at the National Railway Museum, take a stroll along the ancient city walls and marvel at the grandeur of York Minster, one of the largest Gothic cathedrals in Europe. We have arrived at York Station. Join me as we uncover the treasures of York together. We are going to York's National Railway Museum. It is the largest and arguably the most historically important railway museum in the world. The museum holds a staggering 100 historic locomotive engines. It is located immediately beside York Railway Station on Lehman Road and is free to enter. It is a fascinating destination that caters to a wide range of interests. While it is undoubtedly a haven for railway enthusiasts, even those with little knowledge of railways will appreciate the museum's offerings. From Queen Victoria's opulent royal carriage to the charming miniature railway, there's something for everyone to enjoy at this museum. The railway museum is spread over three gigantic shades and a large outdoor area. As its name suggests, this is the largest of the three railway sheds. The Great Hall is home to the Mallard, which set the world speed record of 203 km per hour for a steam locomotive in 1938, a record that has never been beaten. Climb aboard a 1960s Shinkanshin, the Japanese bullet train, a breakthrough in high-speed rail travel. Then there is the Eurostar, the train that connected Britain to Europe through the Channel Tunnel. 
the magnificent Duchess of Hamilton, one of the largest and most powerful express passenger locomotives used in Britain. The museum boasts a vast collection of locomotives and not all of them are steam driven. One highlight to look out for is the 1934 GWR diesel rail car which features a sleek and futuristic art deco design. Originally intended for business travelers, this diesel rail car represents a significant step forward in railway technology and is a must see for visitors interested in the evolution of locomotives. Adjoining the Great Hall is the North Shed. One corner of the North Shed is devoted to the Flying Scotsman story, exploring the history of famous locomotives, its owners, crew and passengers. The highlight of Session Hall is Queen Victoria's railway carriage, dubbed a palace on wheels. This opulent carriage was used by the Queen and the members of her family. The museum holds the world's finest collection of railway carriages and furnishings. On the wall is a large painting of Waterloo Station in 1960s by the artist Terence Cunu. Then there is the Euston Clock, the historic station clock from the Euston Station in London. Outside Station Hall is the South Yard, home to the museum's popular miniature railway. The railway usually runs on a small oval track. York's city walls are an impressive sight to behold. They encircles the city of York and date back to Roman times, with much of the structure being rebuilt during the medieval period. They were once a vital part of the city's defense system, acting as a protective barrier against attacks from enemy forces. Today, these walls offer visitors a glimpse into the city's rich history and provide a breathtaking view of York skyline. Walking along the city walls is a journey through time, as you pass by ancient gates imposing towers and centuries-old ramparts. But the walls are not just a historical attraction. They are also a popular spot for locals and tourists to take a leisurely stroll, go for a jog or simply relax and take in the views. The walls provide a peaceful escape from the bustling city streets below and they offer an opportunity to immerse oneself in the serenity of York's past. We are en route to York Minster. This is the River Ouse, a major river in England that eventually empties into the English Channel. The York Minster is open from Monday to Saturday 9.30 am to 4 pm and on Sunday quarter to 1 to quarter past 3. There is an admission fee which may vary depending on the time of the year. York Minster is a Gothic cathedral that has a history dating back to the 7th century and an active place of worship. It is one of the largest cathedrals in Europe and is renowned for its stunning architecture, intricate stained glass windows and impressive collection of medieval treasures. Standing in the nave, we are surrounded by some of the finest examples of medieval stained glass in the country. 
The nave of York Minster is the widest in Europe and one of the highest. Look back to see the large rose window above the entrance. The stonework dates from 1220, but the glass itself is from the late 15th century. Here we have the iconic central tower of York Minster. Visitors can climb the 275 steps to the top for breathtaking panoramic views of the city. The choir of York Minster is a delight to the eye. The choir screen separates the choir from the nave featuring 15 kings ranging from William the Conqueror to Henry VI, 7 to the left and 8 to the right. Pass through the arch door of the screen into the choir. It is at the heart of the minster and services are held here daily. The grand organ of the minster is an awe-inspiring sight to behold. Its massive frame looms before us, towering high above our heads and dominating the space with its majestic presence. The cathedral also houses the ancient stone altar known as the High Altar, which is said to be the site where Constantine was proclaimed Emperor of Rome in 306 AD. We have now arrived at the chapter house and it is truly a sight to behold. Take a moment to look around and appreciate the stunning architecture and intricate details that make this room so special. From the soaring vaulted ceiling to the exquisite carvings on the walls, every inch of the chapter house is a testament to the incredible craftsmanship and skill of the medieval artisans who built it. Deep under the choir lies the crypt. The crypt in particular contains a number of carved capitals from the period and a rich array of Norman artifacts. Most fascinating of this is perhaps the Doomso, a survivor from the Norman Minster. It illustrates the mouth of hell, showing lost souls being boiled alive by demons. Below we can see the remains of the original Roman fortress built from the earth and timber more than 2000 years ago. A large statue of Emperor Constantine the Great, the founder of Constantinople and the first Christian Emperor of Rome was proclaimed Emperor in York. Today York Minster remains a popular tourist destination and an important place of worship. As we come to the end of part 1 of our video, I hope you have enjoyed learning about York. But the adventure doesn't end here. Stay tuned for part 2 where we will explore more of York's beauty and even more of what makes it so special. So sit back, relax and get ready for part 2. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of my content. See you soon.